The Ray Robinson Fitzy Zivic fight was a veritable war. Zivic, former welterweight champion, was a brawling fighter. And on this October evening, he gave Robinson the toughest fight of his young career. The two men exchanged torrid punches throughout the bout. Robinson, landing long right-hand bombs in the later rounds, was awarded a hard-fought decision, his 26th without a loss. LaMotta forced the fight, constantly throwing punches. Robinson, caught on the ropes too often, was unable to counter effectively and lost a very close decision in 1943. Just two weeks after his loss to LaMotta, Ray is back in the ring. In New York City, Ray takes on top Jackie Wilson. Wilson gives Robinson a good manhandling in the early rounds. Ray, scoring frequently with accurate rights, drops Wilson midway through the fight, and after 10 rounds, the decision goes to Robinson. Ray signs to fight the legendary Henry Armstrong, seen here in training for the upcoming fight. Nicknamed Hurricane Hank, former champion Armstrong will be a stern test for young Ray. Armstrong's bobbing and weaving make it difficult for Robinson throughout the fight, but Ray's lightning left jab is enough to give him the edge and the judge's decision. In February 1945, Jake LaMotta and Ray Robinson meet for the fourth time. With three exhausting battles between them already, Jake and Ray did not disappoint anyone. Robinson, now 25, was pressed to the limit, but Ray makes it three out of four as he triumphs again. Just two weeks after the Lewis Kahn bout, Ray takes on Tony Riccio. This rare film, taken by a spectator, is the only existing record of this fight in 1946. Robinson, in magnificent form, sends the crowd home early with a fourth round TKO. There seems to be no stopping Robinson's rise to the top of the welterweight ladder. Three weeks later, Ray stops Cliff Beckett, here shown in another unique home movie of this exciting young fighter. Unbelievably, Robinson and Sammy Angott weigh in just six days later. With the winner promised a shot at the welterweight title, Robinson and former lightweight champion Angott fought toe-to-toe -to -toe for ten punishing rounds. But superior hand speed and accurate counterpunching were the difference as Ray wins a unanimous ten-round decision. Ray takes on Freddy Flores as he continues to climb the welterweight ladder. Flores, a seasoned club fighter, is no match for the awesome two-handed attack of Robinson and falls in five. Tommy Bell on the left and Ray Robinson square off for the most important fight of their lives. They're fighting for the world title left vacant by champion Marty Servos' retirement. There can be no mistakes. Robinson, boxing brilliantly, lands repeatedly with rapier-like lefts. Bell takes everything Ray can throw and lands telling blows of his own. After a masterful 15 rounds of boxing, Ray Robinson becomes the new welterweight champion of the world. June 1947, Robinson signs to fight California's Jimmy Doyle in the first defense of his welterweight crown. What took place before and after that fight will live in Robinson's memory forever. The night before the fight with him, I, I dreamed in my sleep that I knocked him out and he died in the ring. And I got up that morning and I told the commission that I wasn't going to fight. And they said, why? And I told them what I had dreamed. I know. They said, oh, Ray, no, that's just a dream. And they called a, a Catholic priest and a minister. And they came and they talked to me and told me to go ahead with the fight. And just like we dreamed, Aldo, I hit him a left hook and he died right there in the ring. It's terrible when you have a premonition before. You know, I, I had the premonition before that this was going to happen. And for a long time, Aldo, I couldn't fight. I couldn't fight. When I started again, I, was, I couldn't hit a man hard, you know. I was very trying. Just two days later, Robinson meets leading welterweight contender Kid Gavilan. Although a non-title fight, both men fought furiously and had the Yankee Stadium crowd in a frenzy. Only experience made the difference as Robinson receives the judge's nod after 10 brilliant action-packed rounds. Two weeks later in Philadelphia, Cuba's Kid Gavilan is given a shot at Ray's welterweight crown. Gavilan is out to revenge his loss to Robinson of one year ago. The 29-year-old Robinson is giving away six years to his younger challenger. Both men perform brilliantly as they exchange savage punches again and again. 
When the final bell sounds, Ray Robinson is still champion of the world. The morning of the Robinson and Fuseri weigh-in, suddenly a very unusual problem occurs that actually jeopardized Ray's crown. Wait a minute, Commissioner. He's all right, Vic. What do you mean? Just a minute. Let's have it a little here now. I don't think you've made it, Ray. 147 and a quarter. That means you're a quarter of a pound overweight. I think you can make the weight, and ordinarily, Vic, ordinarily, uh, the weighing would be at 12 o'clock. At this time, it's uh, uh, at 11 o'clock. We advance it up for the benefit of the newspaper men and for the fighters and the and photographers and so forth. And so he would, you would ordinarily give him an hour to make that uh, uh, quarter of a pound difference. Well, I'll tell you, Commissioner, ordinarily I would. But uh, due to the fact that this is a championship fight and Sugar's got a quarter of a pound over, I'd prefer that he give that quarter of a pound of Sugar to somebody that needs it and get down to the 47 pounds according to our contract. Don't worry, he'll make it. Well, That's a very nice to worry about. He'll make it. Very patriotic gesture, but... After all, so you've got to make the 47, so okay. we'll give you until 1 o'clock to make that quarter of a pound. I'll I'll make it it. A few hours later. Let's try it again now. I hope you've done it this time, Ray. <laughs> Looks like you've made it just a little bit under 147 pounds. And that's for the Waterweight Championship. What do you think of it, Vic? Are you satisfied? Well, from here it looks okay to me. Well, then that does it, Ray. Congratulations to you. Both, right? May the better man win. Well, Charlie, good luck to you. I think I need it because I have a good meal in five days. <laughs> Meanwhile, in England, 23-year-old Briton Randy Turpin does some destruction of his own as he ascends the middleweight ladder to earn a title fight with Robinson. Randy lets reporters at ringside know he's ready with a confident wink of the eye. Gene Fulmer in black trunks, Ray Robinson in white. Fulmer won rounds one and two with his aggressive two-fisted attack. Former champion Robinson jabbed beautifully to win rounds three and four. Here in round five, neither man has an edge. This is Sugar Ray's first fight since losing the middleweight crown to Fulmer five months ago. Fulmer has had two fights since their meeting, taking 10-round decisions from Wilfie Greed and tough Ernie Durando. Robinson at 37 is giving away 11 years to the younger champion. Fulmer misses with a windmill right hand. Ray must be very careful to stay out of Fulmer's punching range. Robinson is content to score with his long left jab and sharp combination. Referee Frank Sikora breaks the two fighters. Tough body shots by both men. A bone crunching left explodes off Fulmer's jaw and he crumbles to the canvas. In slow motion, here's that perfectly timed left hook to Fulmer's jaw. There it is, and down goes Gene Fulmer. Ray Robinson walks to a neutral corner as the referee picks up the count. Ray continues to campaign in the middleweight division to establish himself once again as a contender for the world title. At 45 years of age, his next fight will be the last time he will ever step into a ring. On November 10, 1965, Sugar Ray Robinson will take on the number one ranking contender, Joey Archer. Sugar Ray Robinson in white trunk, Joey Archer in black. The first three rounds were very close. Here in round four, both men begin to throw caution to the wind. Again, they stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and slug it out. Robinson must win tonight to put himself back in contention once again for middleweight honor.
Robinson and Archer split rounds five and six here in round seven. Archer lands a stinging left-right combination that sends Robinson crashing to the canvas. The referee counts over Robinson after that perfectly timed combination by Archer. Robinson says he's all right, and the fight continues. Torrid punches by both fighters. Archer won rounds eight and nine with accurate rights to the body and head. Here in the tenth and final round, Joey is definitely ahead in the scoring. There's the bell signaling the end of this great fight. While the fighters continue to receive a standing ovation, the judge's decision goes to Joey Archer with a hard-fought victory over Ray Robinson.